like, you know, when you look at families or, and you just look, you're like, oh, I want to be more like that. Like Mm -hmm. you just, there's something you're drawn to. You just love how they are together or how their family, like they're, they feel like the, the home feels, the marriages, you know, and you just feel drawn to that. And, you know, realizing people are wanting the end result, but not seeing all the steps that it took to get there. You are listening to the Famous at Home podcast with Dr. Josh and Christy Straub. Because when it's all said and done, we all want to know that we were famous at home. Welcome back to the Famous at Home podcast. Today we are talking about cohesiveness. I love it. All right, we're talking about cohesiveness, Christy. And before we jump in, please let me say this. Uh, If you've heard us last week talking about resourcefulness, this week, obviously, we're talking about cohesiveness and what that word means and that we got to talk about that, what that even means. But before we do, mykidseq.com, go check it out. We are launching the first piece of the curriculum. We're doing that by training parents, teachers, school administrators, church leaders, guidance counselors, anything, you know, if you're a, a leader of a, a director of a, of a homeschool co-op, anything like that. Uh, we want to give you everything that we know about EQ kids in a biblically based format. So we're doing a coaching workshop that will begin in February, 2023. The registration is currently happening at mykidseq.com. We would love for you to check out the details, emails, if you have any questions, but we would love to have you be a part of that. You get the first eight weeks of the curriculum to try out. Uh, we're trying to really create a, 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 a community that are champions for this whole idea of emotional intelligence in kids from a biblically based perspective. So we'll have a community. We'll be on live Zooms with you guys. Uh, we really are creating a community out of this. And so we'd love for you to check that out. Well, and I think so that you feel the confidence that you have, like you can do this in order to implement this. It's not just like, it's the, the curriculum will be designed to be like open and go, but you'll realize it's not like math. Like EQ is something you have to be living out in your own life in order for it to be effective in the lives of those that you are teaching, if that's your own kids or, you know, kids at your church or your school, your homeschool co-op. So that's what this is for, to really equip you to like be the expert uh, coach for My Kids EQ. And we are like just so pumped about this. It's yeah. been so cool, like seeing like the first, you know, people coming in and like, I just, it feels so exciting. So today we're talking about cohesiveness and it's kind of like, what does that word even mean? What, what what does it mean? Did you look up the definition? I did. And I I love the definition because I think it's, it's, it's really a fun definition. In fact, I'm going to read it specifically off of my iPad, which is just barely out of reach, but I finally got it right here. I love this. It is the act or the process the act or the process of sticking together tightly. It's, a pro- it's for sure a process. The act it? or the process of sticking together tightly. Now, Shoo! now, now, the, and again, that's particles. You know, if you're yeah. studying science and you're into that whole space, particles and that type of thing. But I think the other component of it is, I mean, I love that definition. The act or the process of sticking together tightly because we live in a culture today that is disintegrating the family. It is fragmenting yes. the family. Yes. It is not sticking together tightly. It is about every individual going their separate way, achieving yeah. their, finding their dreams, yeah. you know, doing your thing. And we're seeing celebrity, celebrity marriages fall apart because everybody wants to accomplish their individual goals and their individual desires. And, and, and yes, I'm all a fan of individual desires and everything happening, but for the sake of the team, like how are we building our team and how are we championing the hearts? I think there is no safer place to find your individual identity and champion what it is you want to do than in the context of a cohesive family unit. And that is why we're talking about it today. Um, I, you know, I was trying to think of a, of a more exciting phrase because it's like, who wants to listen to a, a podcast episode on cohesiveness? And to me, I'm just going to call it sticking togetherness. But, and the, it's the, pro, what is it? The, the process act or, or the process. Yep. And I think that's the thing. Like I, I had a friend over here the other day and they were talking about just like, you know, when you look at families or, and you just look, you're like, oh, I want to be more like that. Like mm-hmm. you just, there's something you're drawn to. You just love how 
they are together or how their fam like they're they feel like the the home feels the marriages you know and you just feel drawn to that and you know realizing people are wanting the end result but not seeing all the steps that it took to get there yeah that's good like the process that it took to get there i was talking to another friend who was just going through a really hard time and she you know sort of referenced like you know like, why can't I be more like you, meaning me? And I was like, whoa, like I, I, you have to remember, like, I want to take you back even the years before you knew me. We just did a podcast earlier today, an interview with Davy Blackburn, Nothing is Wasted podcast. And I was able to tell some of my story of like being on the bottom rung of life. And if you've been around Famous at Home podcast for a while or our story, like you've heard it, but I was really bad <laughs> like bottom rung of life and so I was really not well and I have worked we have been through a ton to get to where I am and so you know that whole thing like don't compare your your middle to someone else's or your beginning to someone else's middle like that I think this plays out in this conversation too where it's this desire for a family that looks like this and this really, wow, you're such a like, how do your, your kids act like this and your marriage is like this and your family's like this. But realizing these are some of the practical process based mm -hmm. things that have to take place over time that in order to build that cohesive unit where you're like, yeah, we are solid. And I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm not going to apologize for where we are in life because we've done the work. Yeah. And I, yeah. I say that to empower every single person. We can all do this. Yeah. And it's just being intentional about it. And, I, and I, we had a uh, pastor Aaron Smallwood. Who, I remember him speaking into our lives just one night, just saying, don't apologize for what you have warred for. Your family will war to get to where it is. And you don't need to apologize for that. You live it out. You be the light. And I think as you shine your light, it draws people in. People want to be like your, they, they, and that to me, that is the mission of Famous at Home is to multiply this vision of healthy families that are putting out the light of Jesus into the world by how they're living their lives. And I think sticking together tightly, this tight knit idea of the process of sticking together is, it is the foundation yeah. For healthy children to grow up into adulthood and feel a sense of belonging, yeah. to feel a sense of, of 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 community, a sense of purpose, because they belong to something. They belong to something that's bigger than themselves, yeah. and it's this family unit that is that sticks together, and that has uh, mottos and traditions and and values and that type of thing, and so. Today, let's talk a little bit about how we build family cohesiveness. We talked a little bit about what it is. Now, how can we start building it? And I think, Christy, it to me, and we talk about this in the Famous at Home book. If you're not familiar, if you're a new listener, uh, we have a new book called Famous at Home, Seven Decisions to Putting Your Family Center Stage in a World Competing for Your Time, Attention, and Identity. Now I need to take a nap after saying that uh, subtitle. <laughs> but um, you, you are competing for... You have a world competing for your time, attention, and identity. And in that book, what we talk about is, and this is how we coach families as well, is that you have a culture that is that is genuinely, if you don't pay attention and you don't live intentionally with the direction you're heading with your family, the culture will raise your family for you. The culture will find a direction for each individual person. You will become fragmented and you won't, you'll wake up one day and you won't, you'll be like, who are we as a family? And I think values are the core place to start. And we talk about it in our book. And we walk people through how do you set family values? I think it starts there. Yeah. And I think the process of setting your family values. Okay. Because we've talked about this before. But if values are new to you, values are basically like a set of principles that you have decided are very important for your family. We all like, if you're a believer. And that will guide the decisions that you make. Yes. And powerfully guide. Like that has probably been the biggest thing. But you'll say you live by a set of values. Like if you're a believer in Jesus, you know, like we would have a set of values as a church body that we would say we believe in. But we all live that out very differently. And there's certain ones that are far more important, like charity, generosity, or um, benevolence, um, hospitality. Like that's super high on some people's list. Some people, like we're aware that's a value, but it's just not a priority. And so for a family, setting a 
family values, we say three to five, like no more than that, because then it's just like, you're trying to be all things to all people, but you have a set design by God that is imprinted on your family. And if you are living that out uniquely, you, you will thrive (laughs) and you'll be on purpose and on mission and it will fit the feel of your family. And so we do talk about it in a chapter in Famous at Home because it's so important to setting, it really sets up, I think, the boundaries of our lives and like, because it sets up how we live our, the, how we decide things in our life. It's made us, it's how we're doing what we're doing now versus ha- living a life that could look very different. Um, and we've talked about that before too, where it was just, I mean, we could be, Josh particularly could be working at, you know, what would have been like his dream job in the corporate ministry type world. And yet there would be more money. And less time together. And less time. So, you know, you're living by a set of values right now, whether you realize it or not. And one of the best ways to identify that is to look back at the last six months of your uh, calendar and look at where you spent your time and look at your checking account over the last six months and look at where you spent your money. That will be an indication of where what you're valuing in your life. And you can do that for your kids in terms of how they spent their time, you know, each of you individually as a family, that type of thing. And you might look at it and go, wow, we do not want to be living up by these values because that will shape how you spent your time and your money over the last six months will shape what your family will look like five, two, five, ten years from now. And our heart is to really guide a direction where you can identify and we'll put the famous home book in the show notes it's a, it's a step-by-step process on how to how to implement this but we just encourage you to come up with three no more than five values that can guide your family mm-hmm. and then underneath each of those values coming up with a daily a weekly a yearly or a daily a weekly a monthly and a yearly action step for each value because then you know that you're living out those values by the way that you're living your lives and the actions that you're taking. So if it's a weekly date night, for example, you have a weekly date night you decide to set up to um, enhance your value of connection, which is one of our family values, then that is a weekly uh, way to connect with your family. Um, and, and you can do monthly, you can do daily. What are the daily ways? You know, one of the things for us is this 15 minutes a day idea. What are we feeling um, uh, what, what's, our, what's going on in our hearts. And so you can check that out. It's that way to build team cohesiveness where you're constantly checking in into the heart of the other person with a spouse. It's the positive and the uncomfortable moment of the day or feeling that you had that day and identifying it with a feeling word. And then doing that with your kids, maybe at the dinner table where instead of a high or low of the day, you're asking them the most positive or uncomfortable feeling that they had. And it's getting into the heart level. And what it's doing is that in and of itself builds cohesiveness because you have family values that you're living by, but you also have a uh, a heart level conversation that's driving those values. Mm-hmm. And, and, and those to us are just absolutely critical. And so we can um, put that link in the show notes and even a link to the 100 commonly held values that you could download today and, helpful, yeah. and go ahead and, and download that and see, uh, you know, to come up with that in your own family with one another. Christy, I was just curious from you. Uh, I would love for you to share some of the ways that we have built cohesiveness, that stick togetherness in our family over the last number of, and, and I love it because I, I just, I walked into our closet. So our closet is super small. Um, it's like this small little square room and I walk in there this morning, the dog's in there, our two-year-old is in there, our eight-year-old is in there, our 10-year-old gets up and he comes in there and they're playing with these like little toys and I'm trying to get dressed. Christy's trying to get dressed, but like our family is in the, in, in the entire the house, house, the smallest room of the house, every, every single, single person, person is sitting there together to be together. And it was just this sweet moment where I was just like, Lord, I love us. I love our family so much. Um, but again, as Christy said earlier, like it, it takes time to cultivate. And so That's what are funny. some ways that we've you done You didn't that? say that this morning, but I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, every single person in this, it, I mean, our house is yeah. fairly large. And I'm like, we're all in these tiny little room. Bless it all. Um, camping. Camping is my answer. That is what I camping have, has been a good one. Camping, I have found this more recent, and some of you know that journey. Um, 
to have brought us together and like well let me just say this too let me let me tie this to family values adventure is one of our family yeah. values and so for Good. many many years we had a membership at a lake and a boat membership and so we would go to the lake every as much as we possibly could um and, and during the summer that. months and we loved it and it was a way to build family cohesiveness it was a way for us to invite other families um and just hang out with other families but it got to a point now where that in and of itself was just getting it was just getting monotonous and so we wanted to come up with new ways to have a stick togetherness to have a a, a sense of that sticking together and camping became that so that was camping. kind of the background to get to where camping has been now yeah, I would say camping. I would say bucket lists, creating bucket lists. So I started doing this, I don't know, I guess probably, it was probably earlier this year. I don't even think we did it last year. But so for each season-ish, you know, we would create a bucket list, summer bucket list, fall bucket list. Now we're making a Christmas bucket list. Then we'll make a winter bucket list after Christmas is over because everyone's totally depressed that Christmas is over. But it became this together thing where we're like, what are the things we really want to do this in these next month or two months and everyone gets a say of like, Oh, I, my favorite thing is, you know, yeah, going to the lake. I want to go to this particular lake and I want to bring this family or I want to go camping at this campground or I want to go to, you know, this national park um, or just little traditions like for Christmas, like just the little things that we love to do. Like marshmallow. I made marshmallows this year. I really wanted to learn how to make homemade marshmallows. So we've done that one. Um, but it brought, it's like, it's a small way. I don't even think it's a small way. It's a, it's a fabulous way to bring everybody together around a set of like goals. It's not just like, Oh, what are we doing today? It's like, Hey mom, do you think we could do this part today? And, um, we're working on something for like gifts for friends, like friends, family friends around here. And so just to have the kids in on the like planning of it and when we're going to get all the things to make them and whatever, has just brought this cohesiveness. We're working as a team. We're planning it out. And it's not just mom and dad being like, here guys, here's the game plan. Like, this is what we're doing this Christmas or this season, or this is what we're doing, um, you know, this summer. It's like, what do we want to do as a family? And to see the kids get a place and a voice in that is really fun. But we also get a voice. And I mean, I think we've like, we literally have done everything. And I think that's why we've been so fulfilled this last year is like, we're actually completing these fun things that used to be just in your head only. And you kind of hope you get them done or you get to do them. So I would say camping and bucket lists. Love it. Camping and bucket lists. The, the one thing that I love doing, and we, we kind of did this last night as well as a family. Christy was out with a friend and so the kids, board games to me are a huge one. I think there's nothing better than just sitting around a table. You know, we have a round table now, which I absolutely love. Christy fought for that for many, many years. And I don't know why I kicked back, but I love the round table. You can see one another, but playing board games is a big one for me. Um, you know, even uh, we're, we're very cautious about screens and how we do all that. But at the same time too, I think there's something beautiful about, you know, our son last night was like, Dad, I just want to play video games with you guys. Like, I, I want to do it as a family. And so we played Mario Kart 8, and we all were laughing, and it was just a lot of fun um, because everyone just had good attitudes about it, and it was just that that helps. But um, but there's there's something when you're coming together around a, a, a task like that or a game where there's some com competition and things like that. And then also, too, I think around hobbies. Uh, I think that was another one that we have recently um, done as well is, you know, Landon and I are you know, into the baseball cards and like selling baseball cards on eBay and trying to find ways that we can, you know, start little businesses and things like that. Kennedy's doing the same thing with, with her little crafts and her business. Um, you know, just taking them outside and teaching them, uh, practical ways. Like in the last episode, we talked about building fires and, um, you know, Landon got a pellet gun and for his birthday. And so just even the way that they love to shoot at targets and find these little hobbies that you're doing together as a family, uh, to me, I think uh, that has also brought cohes cohesion in our family is these these little hobbies that we're picking up together as a family. And and then another one is tasks. Like it's Christmas time right now. If you're listening to this, maybe it's past Christmas by now that you're listening to it, but it just so happens to be that 
you know, we put up Christmas lights and, you know, my daughter helped me do that. And I invite them in. I try to invite my kids into everything that I'm doing, if possible, even if it's running an errand, going to the grocery store, I want to invite them into that process. So I'm not just doing things alone because that in and of itself builds cohesion in our family. So, those so those are, are those are some of the ones that, that have recently that I, I think of that stick out. And I think too, like our Shabbat dinner Friday nights is mm-hmm. a big one because that has taught us there's a predictable rhythm to when we get to be yeah. together and that's yeah. been awesome um well and into that point dinner time like dinners are yeah. huge I, I think i don't want to like just brush over things that are normal everyday things in our family that are that bring cohesion that we're just like we don't realize they bring the sticking togetherness but having meals together every single day or at least as many as you can at, in any you know in a week I mean there's times I'm traveling or there's times Christy's out like last night I had dinner with the kids and Christy wasn't here but it's like as much as you possibly can have dinner as a family together around the table and unite on your day after and, and have meaningful conversation around the dinner table I, there's probably not one more practical exercise I could give you to build family cohesion than that Family walks. I like that one too. Good one. Yep. And working in the garden in the summers. I've loved that. Like when they're actually, even if they're not really out there helping us, because I feel like their interests last about 10 minutes, but they're still around. And they're, they're around like, it's and just, they're helping. And yeah. yeah. And and another one for me too is, is reading. Um, we started reading um, books uh, as a family. And I think there's a reading time, whether it's a reading time, a devotional time, a family meeting, those types of things where you have them once a week or maybe if it's a reading time every night for 15 minutes or something where it's it's me reading that, to the kids. And then we stopped it. Yeah. Well, we're we gonna, should get back into Well, that. we will be getting back into it. Trust me. I guess me. we were we've traveling. Got a, we've got a, we were traveling and we've got a, traveling really throws off rhythms a bit, but um, we are. But don't be afraid of that. And then just jump right back in. I think that's what. We, yeah. Christmas like, time's coming and there's going to be something coming for the kids that is going to get us back into that. So I'm excited uh, for that. So. We will be getting into that, and but but that has been huge. Like sitting down in the living room as a family before bedtime, and reading to the kids. Not like not having the kids read, but we read to the kids. That has been a a, a really good one. I think that's, you know, I'm sure like read it aloud revival. People you know, in the homeschool space, you probably used to, you know know those terms. But like I, because we homeschool, there's so much time that I have to. I'm listening to them read, and so reading becomes like. It's just another thing, schoolish thing, I think, that feels like for them. So even when I'm with them reading, I think they still feel like it's school. So it has been sweet to just read for fun and yeah. we're reading to them and they don't, they can just like play Legos or trains or whatever and listen. So Yeah. It, another thing too, and this is, this has been huge is, and it goes back to the closet thing from this morning, but doing things in a room together. So even like last night and it, it, it was a massive mess in the living room, but there was trains. There was Thomas the Train, wooden trains all over the living Sorry, room. Sorry, I let him get those out. It's okay. They were all over the living room. <laughs> Furniture was moved out of the way. But we're finishing decorating the Christmas tree while there's trains happening. So it's like there's there's multiple things happening in a room, but everyone's together in that room. Like we're not going off an individual. And, and now granted, hear me. We are, Christy and I are both introverts. So we need alone time in order to recharge and re-energize. But there's something about all of us as a family being in the same room, doing things, even if you're not doing the same thing, that does build cohesion. And so I would just encourage, use, if people are going to go off to their individual bedrooms by themselves, make sure that that is an intentional that is an intentional exercise. In other words, people need a break. We need rest time. We need a nap. We need to recharge. We need to eat, re-energize. We need to go read a book. Make it intentional rather than making it the norm of the house. Yeah, and we do that every afternoon because like when Mike naps, the kids go to their rooms and they have quiet time because mom and dad need quiet time. Well, Josh is usually working, but I need, on those days, like I need quiet time too. And so I have found like I used to actually feel guilty about that I'll be totally honest because I felt like I should be like spending time with them or something while you know Mike is napping and I can actually focus on them and I were like the kids need breaks too they need to learn to be alone because they're gonna over time spend as we get into older age like a lot of time alone and we need to feel at peace and at home with ourselves and so I 
have learned to embrace it, not feel guilty about sending them off to their rooms for a quiet time because I genuinely need it. Like I'm, I am with them a lot and I do love that, but I desperately need even just quiet PSA. I've started using, um, earplugs, like just like the general earplugs when I start to feel myself from being all in a room together because, you know, if we're homeschooling or, and Mike is playing, like it can just sometimes be, I get overstimulated. And so that has helped me a lot to just silence some of the noise. Like I can still hear them, but it's quieter and it causes my whole nervous system. Great idea. You're welcome. I haven't even told you that I've been doing that. Wow. To calm my nervous system because it's not absorbing so much stimulation and I am a calmer mommy. It's the most game changing thing I've heard this entire episode. Earplugs. I'm doing it. It ju- it really does sense, uh, see, especially for you, that would be good for you because wow. you get overstimulated I get overstimulated with very noise. easily with noise, yeah. I drive in the car by myself. Like when I drive alone, I didn't know no yeah. music or anything. Because it allows me to still be in the room space, with them and not silence. But that's what I've been wanting is quiet. And I realize I can still be with you. But it's just a little bit. So that's why you don't listen to me half the time. You have uh, earplugs in. You're funny. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Thanks. Um, I think also to in order to build cohesiveness, and this is this is another one, is avoiding distractions. So I think it should go without saying that. Um, when there are intentional family times together, putting the phone away, putting homework away, putting other books away, putting things away where you're actually together and you're not distracted. So get rid of the distractions. I think that distraction-free, having a distraction-free time where you're together is is very, very important in that process. And then I, I think another big one is this, is planning big things as a family. Yeah. So in other words, it could be a big family vacation that's coming up that you're going to take six to eight months or a year to plan. And you look forward to it as a family, you're building for it, you're buying things for it. You're, you know, for us this past year in May, it was your brother's wedding. And we were, Mm -hmm. we were gathering, you know, suits and ties and dresses and shoes and getting flights and doing all these things to prepare for this. And all the kids were in the wedding. It was like this big kind of building up to, and so I think finding things like that and then also service opportunities are, are, are massively huge. And I think it's one thing we need to do a better job of yeah, as a family that I, I would like to be doing a better job of is finding ways to serve the homeless, finding ways to serve those in need fi- as a family doing those types of things. Um, whether it's at the holidays or that type of thing, finding ways that your family and our kids, I mean, they are so kind hearted. And so I was, I prayed that over them last night, actually, I was just, um, just thanking God for how soft their hearts are as I was tucking them in the bed and just praying for God to keep, Mm. keep strengthening that soft soft heartedness in them because they just care deeply for people. And, and I see that in them and I want to cultivate that more. And, and I think ways that you can do that as a family. Now we do a ton of service things together with our church. We do a ton of service things together um, you know, with other families and obviously through famous at home and our kids become a part of a lot of those things. And I think they see us really serving a lot, but we're trying to invite them in even more. So like if I have a speaking engagement, bringing the kids with me or bringing a child, not kids, multiple, um, but a child with me, if I go alone, uh, so I'm not going alone so that they're coming with me. Um, those types of things I think are very practical ways to, again, build cohesiveness and also purpose in your family so that your kids are a part of the team. They're a part of like our kids are a part of sending me out to serve other families and they know that they're a part of that and, and sending Christy out and, and they know that they're a part of building those things. And even after like a, a podcast episode today, we will go and we'll share with them at dinner time tonight. Hey, we had a podcast episode thank you so much for being quiet. Thank you. So like what you, you know, the ways that you have, you know, helped us to, to get these messages. Like we want to invite them into being a part of that process. And, and they just feel then that they are part of the team in, in doing those things. And I think too, to add to that, like bring them in was, is inviting them into parts of our day and our responsibilities that we generally wouldn't talk about with them. Meaning, like last Sunday, I was asked to speak at our church. It's the first time I was ever asked to like give a message. And so that was a really 
it felt really big to me. And it was over the Thanksgiving uh, break that I had to like prepare. And so, you know, I, especially Kennedy kept being like, mom, mom, like, can't you, like, I want you to come play. And she couldn't get real in her feels <laughs> about like, and I was like, honey, I would love to come play with you, but let me tell you why I have to stay inside right now and do like, I have to prepare because I'm going to, I have to s- speak on Sunday. And I let her into that journey in the process of like, I have to, you know, pray and ask the Lord what he wants me to say. And then I have to prepare like, you know, what scriptures I'm going to talk about and how I'm going to say it and how I'm going to teach it, whatever. And she was like, oh. And so when I actually went to do it afterwards, she was like, mom, like she was invested in it because she understood that it was, and it was a big deal to me. I was transparent with her. Like, I'm nervous. I've never done this before. And so it was a beautiful bringing her into, and we do try to do that with the podcast and with everything we do with Famous at Home because we're being pulled away from them for those hours. And I want them to understand I'm not just peace kids. Like I'm doing something. And so when I, to give them a sense of empathy too, for mom and dad, like what we take on. And so I've done that with meal planning and that's one that I think is a pretty easy way to pull kids in because how many times do they ask you, mom, what's for dinner tonight? What can I eat? We have no snacks in the house. (laughs) So I started being like, guys, you can help me with this. So we'll sit down and we'll plan the meals. They get a say of what they're, we're going to make. And for a season there, we actually need to get back to that, Josh, where we had them each take a meal and prepares that meal for the week. So they got to like, they would write out what groceries I, I needed to get for them and I, you know, I'll order the groceries, but like they have to write out the list and then they prepare the meal. Some of those meals have been epic. They have been. And yeah. like, again, we've been traveling, so we've kind of got out now. Not of all that. of them taste the best, but they are epic. But and they're, but they're so proud and like that, that sense of otherwise, like going back to what we talked about last week about like raising entitled kids, like they're becoming resourceful and they're also coming to an awareness of like how much has to go on to keep all the things that have just happened for them happening, like food in the pantry. And when there's no snacks and I don't know what to make for lunch and you know, or I don't want this dinner. Well, there is a great solution for that. What would you like to have for next week? And so bringing them into that has also made even meals feel like it's a team effort because it's not just mom. And I don't want that responsibility (laughs) for it to all be on me. I'll quarterback it, but I want them to be doing it with me. Yeah. So good. Cohesiveness, sticking togetherness. I think uh, as a practical, the thing that I would just encourage you to do as you, as you listen to this episode today is come away with what is one way that we can, uh, first of all, praise your wins. Like where are the wins that you're, that you're already are feeling yeah. like that you are cohesive, like that you're, you, that your things are sticking together and not just where are those wins at, but also thinking about like asking your kids, like, where do you feel really connected to us? Like family traditions, by the way, is another one. That's a huge one for cohesion is creating your own family traditions. So I know for sure, like one of the things that our kids would say, um, and this is what I'm saying, like, ask your kids, like, where do you feel most connected? Where do you feel like we are a team that we, that, we, that there's a, a sticking together as a family, like that, that you're, that we're coming together. And I know for sure, like one of the things our kids would say are our traditions around holidays, our traditions around birthdays, those types of things, because there are traditions that we have that in, in our family Shabbat, like Friday nights, like those traditions that are in our family, that's where I know our kids feel connected is there's these routines and rhythms that are happening that make them feel safe, but also feel connected in this. And so find out from your kids, what is one way that they already feel connected? What are ways that you feel connected? And some of the lowest hanging fruit is to re-implement some of those things that maybe have been dropped or that you want to pick up again. Start there. Those are some of the best ways to really start with reconnecting as a family. So you don't have to start big at all. Like these are a lot of things that are that are on the daily. Uh, dinner together, um, reading a book as a family at night, uh, having prayer time together. Uh, by the way, going to church together on Sundays, um, you know, on the weekends, we even talk about that. There are these things that really help you uh, and, and by the way, one thing we're also big on is worshiping together as a family, not just sending your kids off 
into children's ministry all the single time, every single time, but having moments where they come in and they actually worship with you as in, in adult worship, you know, those types of things where you're uh, having communion as a family where you're, you know, those type, yeah, you know, that gets in the whole, the theology of communion and, and children and are they saved or not saved. And, but regardless of that, if your children are saved and, and you can, and, and you feel competent and, and, and led to do communion, Communion as a family is a big one. You know, yeah. these are just spiritually spiritual ways that you can really connect as a family. And so, uh, and can but I start do? small. Like start with the thing that's the lowest hanging fruit for your family. Yeah, and uh, tell stories. Tell your family stories. Mm. Those are the biggest ones. Like, oh, mom, tell that story again of like how you and dad or what you did as oh, a little girl. So good. What grandma said, like what grandma did or how grandpa was when, like those are the stories that make up a family a family like just like the tapestry of your life and make a child make even us like our, uh, make us still feel a part of something bigger we mm-hmm. belong yeah and yeah. we're the ones that are the gatekeepers of those stories like if we stop telling the stories our kids aren't going to have any stories to tell and so i think the more we spend that time just you know drive time in the car, dropping off at things or, or not to be, we're not trying to be corny. We're not trying to be like super planned out, but just organically as it goes, tell stories about your life and your kid's life and what it was like when they were born. And, you know, it gives them, I don't know how many times I've heard our kids repeat stories or tell their little friends things that I'm so like, true. Oh my goodness. You, they love that. They love knowing things about their family and where they come from. And they have such pride in that. So true. Guys, if, uh, speaking of stories, if this podcast is, has been of benefit to you or the book has been a benefit to you, we would love it. If you would go leave a review, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, if you, or, or even on Amazon for the book, like go leave reviews of how this stuff has influenced you. Cause it's how people learn about it and how we can continue to grow and influence more families. And so we are so thankful for you as our podcast listening family. We definitely consider you family. We have talked a lot about ways that we can build cohesiveness. We've talked a lot about ways that we can build simplicity and and resourcefulness in in our kids. But um, if there are ways that we didn't mention that are working for your family, please uh, leave a comment on YouTube. uh, Go to our website, famousathome.com slash podcast and uh, ask us questions. uh, Interact with us. This is the ways that we love to listen, hear from you, and then also even implement your uh, suggestions and your questions into the podcast so that uh, you might hear something that you have reached out to us about. And so uh, we love you all and keep in mind until next week that the greatest red carpet you will walk is through your front door. Keep being famous at home.